So this first lesson in uh, atomic and nuclear physics, uh, we look at the atomic models. So first of all, um, or way back in the day if you like, um, we had the ancient Greek model of a small indivisible kind of unit of matter, um, and they, they called it uh, Atmos or something like that. Um, and um, the guy who kind of re-raised this idea, and this is where we get the idea of atom from anyway, you can see the spelling is similar, was a guy called John Dalton. Um, and he, he re-raised this idea in uh, the 18th, 18th, late 18th, early, early 19th century. And um, when people started investigating all these things, um, you don't really need to know the dates, so I'm not going to write them down. But the next uh, step in the development was uh, by a guy called Thompson, um, and he uh, threw a few experiments and things with uh, cathode rays, which are electron beams, um, came to form this model of the atom uh, as being a uh, positive sphere, so this was positive, um, plus VE, positive uh, charge, and evenly distributed throughout were these uh, negative electrons. And uh, this idea that atoms had were made up of things that had different charges came about, as I said, because of the cathode ray. Um, and cathode ray is uh, your electron beam. So we saw that before. Moving on, and we get to a, a great physicist, the Kiwi, uh, Lord Ernest Rutherford from uh, Nelson. And incidentally, I've got family coming from Nelson as well. So maybe maybe it's something about the place. No, I'm, I'm not in the same class as Rutherford. Anyway, Rutherford, uh, through um, experimenting by firing beams of positively charged radiation at gold foil, came up with um, a, a model of the atom that had a, a small dense nucleus that had positive charges in it. Um, the it was a bit unclear about the the idea of neutrons. Um, but his experiments showed that there was a positive charge in the nucleus, and the electrons were basically orbiting around. So this is a very, oops, this is an orbital model of the atom. Um, there we go, and that's your classic kind of radiation or uh, you know kind of physics, atomic physics uh, idea that most people in popular um, uh, society. And what you see on TV, Jimmy Neutron, that sort of thing, that's that's what you would uh, see. And that was uh, Rutherford who came up with that. And you can see the big difference uh, between um, Thompson's plum, I forgot to tell you, his model up here is called the plum pudding model. Uh, plum, oops, doesn't need to be on the end. I always do that. Plum pudding uh, model, um, because the pudding was the positive um, substrate, that is kind of this background here, and um, the the plums in the pudding, or the raisins in a, in a muffin, or whatever you want to call it, um, were the negative electrons. But anyway, the difference between Thompson's model and Rutherford's model is Rutherford's model is mostly empty space. And I'm going to diverge shortly um, into uh, how Rutherford's experience... His experiment's particularly important because of the New Zealand context, so in New Zealand exams uh, it's always brought up in a lot of detail. Very important. Um, so we'll we'll get into that in a little bit more detail shortly. But carrying on after Rutherford's model um, was Niels Bohr, and he came up with the uh, so some somewhere in between Rutherford and Niels Bohr, um, they there was a little bit more. Oh no no ignore that. Ignore that. Um, Niels Bohr, um, Danish physicist, in the early 1900s, um, maybe not so early but earlyish. He came up with this idea of shells, so you'd have a nucleus um, in, in the center with your protons and neutrons, and then you'd have your electron shells where you've got uh, two, and then you've got um, eight. That's meant to be a shell, like a carrying on. Two eights, eight, eighteen, and so forth. So that's the Niels Bohr model. Um, and that, that is getting into a lot more detail. That's how a lot of the per periodic table was structured uh, based on the simple. You can find the 2, 8, and the 18 uh, on there. 
but it has since um, continued to be refined. So this is a really good example of the nature of science, how models change and are refined over time. Um, we now have quantum models, which look at statistical analysis of electron positions and all sorts. So you talk in terms of probability, um, and the sh we know the shells are no longer... Uh, are not necessarily circular. We now have kind of figure eight type shells with a nucleus in the middle, and some of them are circular uh, or elliptical or whatever. But um, with these kind of figure eight shells, you have uh, remember there's a projector in 3D, so you would kind of rotate that around, and it's like a balloon that's been squeezed, is a better way of, of looking at it. So this is sort of like a 3D, I don't know how to draw a 3D circle sphere kind of thing in here, but. But anyway, that's what it is. Um, so the general models you need to know, just roughly speaking the names, you don't need to know the quantum model. Um, in particular, you need to know Rutherford's model in a fair bit of detail. So we're going to uh, quickly, quickly look at Rutherford's model in a bit of detail. Let's just shrink that down so we can see the whole progression. Um, so Rutherford's model, there were three main things about it um, that that he that he came up with, and we'll just quickly detail the experiment for you. The experiment was um, he had a some lead shielding here with a source of alpha particles. The lead shielding stops um, the alpha particles from going out in all different directions, so we don't want that to happen. So the lead shielding um, here just keeps it from from doing that and directs the beam towards because uh, the alpha particles are radiated out of this um, this middle uh, source americium, americium, I'm not sure how you pronounce that, but they come out and they, they head towards a thin gold foil gold foil is gold that's been beaten down really 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 thinly uh, and, then they, and then they put a screen behind it and it was actually really hard to see they would send the alpha particles through and um, and and watch the way that they would interact with the gold, uh, the gold foil. What they sort of expected to happen was that the alpha particles compared to the gold foil, remembering Thomson's model was what they had previously, Thomson's model would have said that this is full, that there's something there, and, and the alpha particles, if they're going to go through, they've got to punch a hole through the centre. So they should either be able to see the holes or something. They couldn't see the holes, and instead they had this screen set up, which was coated with phosphor, um, and the alpha particles would interact with the phosphor, making small flashes, um, which could be observed by lab assistants sitting for hours on end in the dark, letting their eyes adjust and counting carefully to get the count rate at different uh, positions along the screen. Okay, so um, the expectation that they'll blast holes in there didn't, didn't arrive uh, or arise. Instead, uh, they noticed that they had. Um, three basic uh, outcomes. Um, this, the first outcome was that uh, it was the ex sort of ex expected that most went straight through. Okay, so most, the great majority, went straight through and hit around this region in the middle. And that told them that uh, there's mostly empty space. So that told us that the atom was empty space. And that was a big, big deal coming from Thomson's model down to Rutherford's model from, from a full kind of uh, substrate there, positive substrate down to uh, mostly empty space. That was a big deal. Um, the second observation, oh, I can move up, that gives me a bit more space, was that uh, there, was, there were deflections. Okay, so uh, a, pr a proportion were deflected either side, so they didn't go straight through, they were deflected either side. Um, whoops, I'm hitting the wrong button, there we go. So the deflections, uh, they indicated that there was a charged nucleus. There was a charged nucleus. I'm not sure exactly how they knew it was positive, because uh, you can get deflections going uh, towards or away from uh, if there's a positive nucleus and we've got a positive alpha particle, it can go past it and and go away like that. Or if it was a negative nucleus, it could go on this side and be attracted towards it and bend the same way. I'm not sure how they knew which was which. Maybe with some clever observations um, and and so forth. But 
Uh, anyway, they they worked out from these deflections that there was a positively charged nucleus, um, and uh, yeah, that was the that was the observation from these slightly deflected ones. So then finally, the proportion of what they were expecting was unaccounted for. So they redid the experiment with a much much larger screen. So instead of having the screen merely here, they actually had it all the way around, or very very highly curved. And what they noticed was that some uh, some some of the particles would actually be deflected so that they're, they're coming out from the source and they're actually deflecting in crazy directions like this actually bouncing right off not very many of them mind you but enough so these um, full uh, deflections they told uh, Rutherford that there was a small dense nucleus so it's bouncing off it, and maybe that was the part that actually uh, told them it was a positive charge rather than uh, they knew it was charged based on those small deflections, but the full deflections with a positive um, charge basically here's the nucleus and, and the positive charge is bouncing off um, if it was a negative nucleus, maybe the positive charge would have stuck to it, so that could be uh, the situation but bit of research to find out. If you find out, feel free to let me know. I don't have time at this short notice, but hopefully in the future I will. Um, so those were the three observations, um, and those three things helped Rutherford build his super cool, I think it looks the best, model of the atom there. And this video is long now, but that's the models of the atom, and uh, next we'll be looking at the different types of radiation and a few other cool bits and pieces.